Hello everyone, I'm Max. I'm the product lead for Bitwarrant Secrets Manager. And today I'm going to provide you a demo of our new product. And I'm going to start off by talking a bit why secrets management matters and what secrets are in general. Today's development teams face serious security challenges. Developers use various different applications and multi-tier cloud infrastructures for their work. There are hundreds of different applications with different secrets that typical developers use in their day-to-day -day life. Secrets could be anything from API keys to database credentials, SSL certificates, and so on. And it can very quickly get complicated to manage all of these different secrets. And it's quite tedious to um, track access to all of these different secrets. And it's also not particularly easy to share them in a secure way. Without a proper solution, what happens today is two things. One, which is really suboptimal, which is hard coding secrets, putting secrets in plain text into your code, or a little bit better is using ENV files, which is um, still very commonly happening these days. That is using an ENV file, and then you have all of your secrets defined in that ENV file. Um, but there also the challenge is how do you share those with your colleagues? Often that ends up being simply sending and sharing the ENV file over unencrypted channels. Um, could be anything from Slack to email, definitely suboptimal. And it's also hard to keep track who actually has access to what secret. Every year, 5 million credentials and other secrets get leaked on GitHub. And according to GitLab, 18% of projects hosted on GitLab were vulnerable to leaked secrets. What very often happens is that secrets are hard coded or um, .envs are not part of the git ignore file and then developers accidentally end up pushing secrets onto github repos that may initially be private but at some point they get um, open sourced and the entire world can access their secrets so what is secrets management a secrets manager is a method of storing developer secrets in one secure location it supports the automatic retrieval of secrets and very often also supports the automatic rotation of secrets. And many secret management solutions on the market today are either quite difficult to set up, they are considered overkill for many, many users, or they are very tied to one specific cloud provider, which is also not optimal. So I'm happy to introduce you to Bitwarden Secrets Manager. Bitwarden Secrets Manager offers a secure solution for storing, managing, automating, and sharing secrets at scale across the entire development lifecycle. Our secret manager enables you to minimize secret sprawl. It pretty much completely eliminates the need for hard coding secrets, and it helps you to really provide very granular access to your secrets. So only the people that really need to have access to your secrets and only the machines or servers that need to have access to your secrets get access. As usual for Bitwarden, everything is end-to-end -end encrypted, open source, and we've just built a completely new CLI and SDK um, that enables a lot of different um, custom features and um, potentially also um, very soon a lot of different custom integrations. Now let's take a closer look at how that looks. If you are an existing Bitwarden customer and you have enabled Secrets Manager, you can use the product switcher to go and open up the Secrets Manager beta. Now in this test organization, we haven't set up any projects or secrets yet. This is the dashboard where you see your most recently edited projects and secrets. So let's begin by setting, setting up a project. Let's create a new project. Let's call it test project. And let's add a secret to that project. And we have hello world. You can leave a note in case you want to write down something that helps you to remember what that secret is used for. Very often secrets have pretty much the same name um, so this is just like a helpful field for you to, to organize your secrets for the demo. We don't really need it. Once you created a secret, you can again edit the secret, copy the secret name or copy the secret value, or of course, delete the secret. For any project, you can assign people. 
So here, let's assign Jacqueline. Jacqueline is our product design lead. She designed everything surrounding the secret manager. We can assign different permissions. We can assign a can read and a can read and write permission for Jacqueline. And then we have the concept of service account. And I'll dive into what a service account is specifically in a couple of seconds. Um, but basically, in very short, Service accounts are machine users, for instance, servers that are retrieving secrets on a regular basis, and we can add them as well and provide very granular access to a project. On the secrets page, we just see all of the secrets that we have. Right now we see our hello world secret, and that's pretty much it. Now let's take a look at the service accounts. Service accounts, as mentioned or shown before, can be assigned to um, one or multiple projects and you can assign people to service accounts that manage a service account. So now for instance Jacqueline is able to access the service account and create new access tokens for the service account. Access tokens are a combination of the Bitwarden server API key and a encryption key. And we can provide a name for an access token. Let's call this one GitHub Action. During beta, any access token will only have can read permissions. So using, for instance, the CLI, you will only be able to retrieve secrets. And this is definitely something we are working on very hard to enable as quick as possible that you will also be able to write. That means right now you can only retrieve in the hopefully not so distant future. You will also be able to create and delete secrets programmatically. And you can set an expiration date, can be either one of the predefined ones or a custom value. Once you created an access token, you have to make sure to copy the token. Access tokens are not stored and they cannot be retrieved. Now, of course, if you lose access, it's not such a big drama because you can just revoke the access token and create a new one. Now let's take a look at the trash. In the trash, we see a bunch of old secrets um, that I previously created in this test organization. We can either restore them or we can delete the secrets. In the settings, we offer the possibility to import data and export data as JSON. And that's pretty much it for the UI. Now let's take a closer look at the CLI. The CLI provides you with a bunch of different options. Now, as mentioned before, for now, there are only read operations. During beta, it will only be possible to list and um, get secrets and projects. You can set up a config file to specify um, your access token and so on. And you can also specify a bunch of other things that we'll go through in a second. And you can print this message by typing help, which basically just gives you all the options typical for any CLI. For outputs, you have three different options, um, either JSON, YAML, or none. You can define the color. Do you want um, some basic syntax highlighting, or do you just want a black and white CLI? You can specify the access token for the service account. If you use this option, you always overwrite what is specified in the config file. And you can also simply change the um, config file. So let's say you're working with a lot of different environments. You can do that by either changing the config file or by changing and specifying a profile from your config file. Although we are not officially supporting self-hosting during beta, self-hosting will definitely be avail available at a later stage of the secrets manager development. Um, and we already included that you can specify the server URL, um, which enables you to, in theory, at some point, point the CLI to your self-hosted instance. And then, uh, again, we have the help flag and the version flag, which is very common for any CLI. How does it look if we want to retrieve a secret with the CLI? Here's just a very simple example. You um, spe type get 
secret, you specify the secret ID. In this scenario, we're providing the access token and we get a returned um, secret with secret value. And that's pretty much all. So thanks a lot for watching till the end. And I hope you have fun and success using our secrets manager. If you're participating in the beta, feel free to reach out to Jacqueline and myself pretty much any time. We're welcoming any feedback and we will probably approach you as well with a bunch of questions. Mm -hmm.